Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Little Grip Garage. Today we are going to be putting in a six and a half horsepower Predator engine in my old go-kart, which currently has three horsepower right now. So we're technically doubling the horsepower. My name is Bentley and this is Little Grip Garage. So a while ago I told you guys if you guys want to put a bigger engine in this, just tell me. And y'all wanted to put a, um, a bigger engine in this. So I put an engine on my Christmas list, and yesterday I got an engine for Christmas. So I'm really excited to get it in. But let's just hope that the bolts are like the right size and stuff. We had cousins over, and they really wanted to ride it. So we had to try and get it started, and it hadn't been started in a long time. But previously the pull rope was accidentally ripped off. So we had to take off the sides so that we can use a drill to put right here to turn it over. And we also took off the body because the body mounts right here. When the bumps in the field, it would kind of chip away the fiberglass body and kind of crack it up. So we just took that off so that it doesn't get ruined anymore and that we can ride it. The next thing that we're gonna do is get the engine unboxed and take a look at it. We don't have another clutch, so we're gonna have to hope that the shaft on this is the same size as the clutch so that it'll work because these engines are mainly for like lawnmowers and all that stuff and not made for go-karts. Got some constructions. Yep. Oh, there it is. Wow, that's actually a, quite a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah, I was just going to say, it's way bigger than I thought it was. Oh, you know, the other thing we didn't think about is the throttle cable. Yeah, when you were getting a new chip, I was thinking we also got to hook up the throttle cable and stuff. So here it is, it has six and a half horsepower on 212 cc and eight foot pounds of torque. Um, this is the on off switch right here, the pull rope which was ripped off of this right there. Um, this is where you check the oil and same as right there. So we're going to see if we can get it in. So we're going to get the seat off right now because we just want more room so that we can get the engine and stuff off and on. And this seat was actually for my hot rod wagon over here. Me and my dad started building this a few years ago. Here's the front of it, the suspension and stuff, the rear where the wheels would go on. And then we have the seat mounts right there where the seat will lay right there. But in this body, the seat is part of the body. So we just had to borrow the seat from this for this right now, but we're gonna get that off and then go on to the engine. So this strap is also on here because this seat is obviously not made for go-karts and the holes on the bottom of it, um, only, we could only get one bolt in because they were weird sizes. So we just had to strap down this side and also prevent it from hitting this part of it. That's why it's all scratched up here. Oh, it's not the right size. It doesn't work on this end, so I gotta get a So this throttle cable comes in this way and then, you know, that does the thing here. On the new unit, she shoots in this way and I'm not quite sure that we have the right provisions to hold. I guess they just used a bolt on this one, but we'll have to figure that out and also a stronger return spring because on this guy, the throttle is a fixed throttle. This is made for like a tiller, stuff like that, where you can just crank it and it holds. So the next step is to get the engine unbolted and out of here so that we can get the new one in. How many bolts you got on here? Uh, four. Two on this side, two right there. Can't really see where it's going. Is that it? Mm-hmm.
One more? Yep. Okay, we're going to try and take this engine off now. We think that this is the original engine back from the 70s. Yeah. Oh, good job, buddy. There's gas right all in the shoes. Should we try to clean this up a little bit? Yeah. <clears throat> that was a good time. That's the old kill switch, which we're not going to need now. To this. Right here. This broke apart when we were riding in the field. It's supposed to be mounted in there. Why don't you get a dikes and cut all the zip ties and get that wire out, then we'll clean it up. Now's a good time to wash it all down since we left the engine off, and it's also a good time to paint the frame too. Where the engine was, there's a lot of oil and grease, so we're going to use the cheap poker to get it all off. This looks a lot better. There's a lot of old paint that we just got right off all over it. Right here is really clean, so we're going to take it back into the shop now. A kid's going to go ahead and use the tractor as a hoist to lift up the go-kart so that we can paint it. So we're going to pop the wheels off really quick, dry it up, and then paint it. Okay, first well, this is just a bolt welded to a piece of tube metal, that's all that is. That one might need some grease, huh? Yeah. Only this side. Wow. The tires are stuck. So good news here, the old clutch came right off the old engine, which is kind of unheard of. It didn't even have a set screw or keyway in it. It was just bolted in the end. This one is also threaded, so we're going to do it that way. We'll drop a key or a pin screw setter upper in the thing here. But I don't have a 5 16 by 24 bolt. We're going to have to run into town to get that. But I wanted to show you fellers if you ever run into this. Getting these off can be a bugger sometimes. This one's clearly spun on here a lot. So we were probably losing some HPs there too. But if they're stuck, just use a three jaw gear puller. That'll pop them off. If you don't have one of those, what you can do is get some wood and cut it into wedges. Wedge one this way, wedge one this way. Tanya Harding, Tanya Harding. You know, work back and forth, and that'll lift it off. Still stubborn? Juice. <laughs> heat. Juice. <laughs> heat. Juice. <laughs> heat. Then they'll pop off. We're going to throw this one up on the shelf. It still runs. It just it needs rings, basically. Might be a really good first engine for you to rebuild. Yep. See if we can find a kit or something. But for now, we're going to run into town and... Grab a bolt and a washer, maybe some lunch, and then we'll, I guess, start mocking it up in the frame. Yep. Real quick before we run to town, we're going to put a quick little coat on this. We're 
looking for a set screw for the clutch right now. He's have an Allen key head. So behind the clutch we can get an Allen key in there and you know, set it. And then what else do we need? We also need a bolt to hold on the clutch to the shaft. That was a 5 sixteenths by 24? I think so, yeah. Okay, you want to try to find it? 5 sixteenths by what? 24. I don't think that's 9 8 by 24. So we just found them right here. Now we just got to get some washes for them. We're also looking for a new bolt for our white dirt bike because this one snapped right there at the end and the whole engine almost fell out. So we just got a new body mount one. Now we're just looking for one more little part. We got some springs for the throttle. I don't know what we're going to have to do. Yeah, we could try that. So on this clutch here, I went ahead and tapped her out to a 7 16 by 20, which is coarse thread. It was some unknown thread, most likely that fine thread, you know. But this way a guy could just throw some basic hardware in it. The right thing to do, of course, is just cross thread it with some of that red never come out juice. But I have a feeling this clutch is going to come off in a year, maybe even less. And this is going to go to a big block, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to try to make it simple. We'll put some blue on there. And we got these set screw things. We'll run that in this little groove here. And then we got the right, you know, thing there. We'll put some blue never come off juice on that. And then I think we're all set. This looks to be the right configuration. And good on Predator. They actually wall or one of these out automatically. So they give you the basics there, 3.17 inches but it gives you a little bit of room. So hopefully this just bolts right on, but really not that big of a deal. If it doesn't, we can just drill new holes in that plate. And then we just got to make sure our clutch lines up with the sprocket. But that's what those washers were on that back axle is pulling that sprocket in and out to align the chain there, basically. You're going to use a D-Blow T-Hard 9000. Just tickle it in here. Tickle. Tickle. Tickle, tickle. Applied. Oh. Now, if you don't want to do the set screw method, you can obviously just put a keyway wedge thing in there, but I don't have any laying around. And my local hardware store didn't have any handy either. So, this is just the way we're going, but you can also go the other way. So, when we tried to take the tires off, they were kind of stuck. So since we got the tires off, we're going to try and grease up the shafts a little. So I'm going to grease all these first, then I'll wash my hands, then we'll slide the tires on. Let's snag this on. Now. There, a lot better, huh? You'll pick up probably... 2.6 miles an hour just being greased up now. Get your washers. For a couple bucks, this paint looks way better. Oh, yeah. We're going to see if the bolt holes line up with these ones really quick. Yep. Looks right on this side. Not on this side. This side's a little shorter, looks like. Yeah, that'll work, probably. Cool. Might not even have to adjust the chain. If you just push the cart back, it'll lock it on the chain. The chain's a little not lined up here so we're gonna take one of these washers put it right here so that the chain lines up good so we're lubing up the chain we just got it all lined up the engine put it back on so 
So it turns out the throttle make it happener has a provision here for a cable and also a holder downer upper in here. So what I did was loosen this castle nut on the throttle pivot thingy so that this was a little more loose because it was really stiff, you know, taunt. And then I grabbed one of those springs we bought and just ran it through the fin and the head here. And then this bolt is just holding on a heat shrouder protector. Ran a little piece of 18 gauge wire underneath that bolt, hooked it to that spring. And now that's what we need. So full throttle comes right back to idle. So then we just gotta swing this in here and you know, hook it up and then it should work. Okay, we just got the throttle finished. We just had to put a spring right there. We had to put this clip right here to hold the cable so that it wouldn't get in the way of this and make it stick. So we just need to really put oil in it and gas and see if we can get it started. Okay, right now we're putting some Rotella T6 in it. It was pretty low when we checked. Well, we're going to see if this thing will start. So we want gas on and this on start, choke, turn our switch on. Is there gas in it? Yep. Yeah. This already marks. Oh yeah. Okay, well let's get the seat on so we can ride. We gotta make our own holes right here because this engine is so big that when we put the seat as far forward as it can go, um it does not line up, it, the holes go to like right here. So we're gonna make our own holes on that and right here. So I think we just finished it up. I'm just gonna get my helmet and we're gonna go take it for a spin. A little more turning into it, and then, you'll, and then you'll go straight. How okay. oh, you like the new powers? It's fast. We gotta find a smoother area, don't we? Yeah. And some sort of tire rim. I got a metal detector. For Christmas and I've just been walking down this path and I found something big and I've just been digging it up all day. Yeah, see the back side of the wheel there? How there's these standoffs? Yeah. That's definitely a GM wheel, 15 inch. And there's a bunch of rubble around it. I would go get the tractor and dig it out, but then we don't have any dirt to put back in its place. So then we'd have another big hole in our trail. Yeah, so I'll probably fill it in later with my shovel. It's too bouncy going to the pasture as it is, and it'd spill more coffee, so we should just fill it back in, okay, bud? Okay. Barely on the car right here. I literally just, like, tapped it, and it just quit, like, just did this. Guy's gonna back the governor, you know, way out. 
That way he can pepper this a little bit better because it's once it get bouncing, it's upsetting this enough to where it's just choking out. And it's definitely getting fuel. Choke's not on. I can run it fine when it's sitting still. I can crank on it and hit it all I want, but the second you upset it, it quits. So we're gonna take it up to the shop, back the screw out, and see if that helps. successful engine swap it has way more speed way more horsepower but we still need to figure out why it keeps quitting whenever we hit a bump but if you guys know how to fix that just let us know in the comments and also if you guys want to see me rebuild that old engine just stay tuned thank you for watching another episode of little grip garage